Hey everyone and welcome to another simple science video and in this part 2 of our vertical circular motion series we are going to be looking at forces acting on a system that is undergoing vertical circular motion. This is basically a model of the system that undergoes circular motion that I've basically indicated all of the forces and the tangential velocities respectfully for each of the positions that are most common in your questions. But to further basically simplify this model, we're going to just gonna take away some angles and take away the velocity and just look at the forces that are acting on our system. So as you can see, there are only two forces. There should only be two forces acting on our system. And that is the weight, and that is always constant and always acts downwards, and tension. And this force varies. And note that I did say that there are only two forces acting on the system. But tension may be zero. Alright, tension may be zero. That basically means that the string is slack and that is going to be dealt with situations where we must find where the ball will basically um, not continue move to move, yeah. And we know that when an object undergoes circular motion, any kind of horizontal or vertical circular motion, there must always be a centripetal force acting on it. And it will always act towards the center and this force will always be at 90 degrees angle to the tangential velocity. The centripetal force in horizontal circular motion will always be at a constant angle from the line of action of the weight. And that is the same for the tension force. However, in vertical circular motion, obviously, the angle between the tension and the weight changes. And therefore, when we're resolving radially for the component of the weight, the radial component of the weight, it will change. The radial component of the weight will change. So therefore, the tension will always have to change in magnitude to keep the object moving in a constant radius. If the tension does not change, what you'll basically have is a situation where you're undergoing circular motion and the string is either slack or extended. And we are assuming, of course, that the string is inextensible, so therefore the tension must change. And since the tension changes, and this causes the resultant radial force to change. And the resultant radial force, so basically in the direction towards the center of the circle, is basically the centripetal force, and this will therefore have to change. And we know that the centripetal force is equal to mv squared over r, where v is the tangential velocity at any position given the centripetal force that is acting on the object. And since the centripetal force changes, the linear speed will also have to change. As we talked about in the previous video, at the bottom, the, the centripetal force will be the greatest, and the linear speed will be the greatest, and at the top, it will be the lowest for the centripetal force and the linear speed. And in questions, it is very important to recognize that you must use mathematics to solve questions related to the centripetal force and the conservation of energy. So therefore, you must be able to use a technique called resolving radially. So resolving in the direction towards the center of the circle. All right. So basically, in any of these string situations, in the direction of the tension, if you must, at any position of the object at the ball. All right. So let's look at the, most, the four most common positions that you'll have to deal with. Alright, so centripetal force for the first situation must act upwards in order for this thing to undergo vertical circular motion, and that is equal to T minus mg. In our second situation, the centripetal force must act downwards, and that is therefore equal to T plus mg. And here is where it gets a little bit more difficult. As this object undergoes vertical circular motion, it will be at a position that is at an angle towards the, the vertical. And this angle called theta. All right? So we must be able to find the radial component of the weight. And the radial component of the weight is basically mg cos theta. So these, the tension and this radial component of the weight are basically the two components of the radial resultant force acting on an object. So therefore, this object must have a centripetal force that's acting in the vertically up and to the right direction, and therefore this force must be equal to T minus 
the radial component of the weight, which is T minus mg cos theta. All right, and the other situation is when the ball, the object, is at a right angle to the horizontal, and therefore the only radial component acting on the object is the tension. All right, as you can see, the weight will not have any component towards the center of the circle. Most common questions will require you to basically understand the principle of conservation of momentum and use this in lieu with your knowledge of centripetal force and being able to resolve radially in order to resolve questions. So in this situation, you'll be asked to find tension given V1. All right, tension T2 given V1. So in our previous video, we talked about total mechanical energy, and that is equal to kinetic energy plus mgh at any position in our vertical circle motion situation. So at the bottom, the total mechanical energy will be equal to half mv1 squared. And since energy is always conserved at the position where the speed is v2, the total mechanical energy is the same, and that is equal to half mv2 squared plus mgh. And h in this situation, I've talked about how to calculate this h, is equal to r minus r cos theta. So therefore, mgh at the position where the object is traveling at a velocity of v2 is equal to 9.8 mh. That is r minus r cos theta. All right. And therefore, we'll be able to find what v2 is. Okay. And since we know that mv squared over r is equal to t minus g cos mg cos theta, we will know that t is equal to mv squared over r plus mg cos theta, if you like. And that's how you would use your knowledge of the total mechanical energy and being able to resolve radially in order to find tension. And of course, you might be asked to find tangential velocity, angles, and you'll be basically have to consolidate and become an expert at being able to resolve radially. Okay, and here are some key tips to finish off this video. We know that the magnitude of the centripetal force and tangential velocity always changes around the circle. All right, And the other thing is that you must be able to resolve radial. This is the most important thing in vertical circular motion. And you must be able to use the principle of the conservation of energy to solve problems. So basically use the principle with your ability to resolve radially in order to solve problems. All right? Very, very good, guys. So thank you very much for watching my video. Please watch the previous video on the part one of the vertical circular motion. And this second part, we are going to be looking at more applications of vertical circular motion. Thank you very much, and have a nice day.